who transported her in spirit to the Holy Land and showed her the house in which the Blessed Virgin was told she was going to be the Mother of God. And in and the Blessed Virgin commanded the Calvinists to build an exact replica of this house in Walsingham. And in fact, in her vision, we gather that she, she actually sort of noted down the specifications of the house. She put uh, the Virgin, the Blessed Virgin's command into action, built the house, and um, it became a small shrine. To start off with, it was not particularly grand. It was probably made out of sort of what room door and uh, wooden, uh, wooden foundation and so on. And to start off with, Walsingham was not a particularly important shrine in this country. Uh, it, was near, it was over a hundred years before the Augustinian Prowers actually incorporated the uh, Holy House, as it was called, into a much larger church, the remains of which we will be seeing. And there's very little of it left apart from one huge um, pillar which, um, which remains in the, in the middle of the abbey grounds. Um, Walsingham really took off under, the, under Edward I. And he was the king, if you remember, who sort of chased around and tried to conquer Scotland. And he also, rather unfortunately, was the man who was responsible for expelling the Jews from the and um, he visited a, main, uh, a neighboring shrine in Walsingham, and then moved on to Walsingham. And um, he got very, very keen on it, and we believe he visited Walsingham about 12 times. He passed on his devotion to Walsingham to the son Edward II. And um, Edward II, um, again, was extremely keen on Walsingham, and his son in turn, Edward III, um, who was one of the longest uh, reigning monarchs in this country, um, really gave Walsingham a tremendous boost. He um, visited it many times, and during his reign, you had the Black Death. Now, the Black Death was a bubonic plague. It wiped out something like 45% of the population of this country. The number of pilgrimages that came to Walsingham doubled and trebled during that period because they were obviously asking for salvation from the plague. And um, then Walsingham, by this stage, was one of the major shrines of Europe. It was on a par with um, Compostela, Rome, and Jerusalem. And um, the number of pilgrims that came was so huge that they, when they walked at night with their torches, um, it was compared to the Milky Way. And in fact, the Milky Way in medieval times was called the Walsingham Way because of this. And um, this was the sort of heyday, really, of Walsingham. Unfortunately, Walsingham became, lost its simplicity. There was uh, one or two scandals, including a rather strangely named gentleman called Prior Snorri, who um, in fact, um, I think what he got up to was probably very similar to the expensive scandal in the House of Commons. And um, he was actually removed by the Pope. And um, also the simplicity of the Holy House um, diminished. It, the, um, it was all covered in jewels and gold and so on. And uh, in fact, when Erasmus, who uh, Father mentioned in his lovely prayer, visited the shrine in 1511, he, um, in fact, uh, was very um, cynical, really, about the sort of splendor that Walsingham had achieved from its, the simplicity of its roots. Um, all of the kings of England were extremely keen on Walsingham. Henry VII, the first of the Tudors, was great devotee, and his son, Henry VIII, um, who many people think was some kind of anti Catholic monster, was in fact one of the greatest devotees of Walsingham, and he used to stay at East Barsham Manor, which is about two miles from here, and he walked in barefoot. He gave a huge candle to the shrine, and um, 
he uh, when uh, he had a child, a male child born by Catherine Barry Hill in February, in, in the sort of February weather, he rode all the way into from London to to Walsingham to give thanks. Um, I won't go into all the causes of the Reformation, but basically it was because Henry VIII fell for Anne Boleyn, and Anne Boleyn would not allow him to make love to her unless she would make Queen of England. And there are theories that it was to do so with the male succession, but in fact they had, he had got Mary as uh, a legitimate heir, and there had been queens of England before, like the Empress Maud, and there'd been lots of queens on the continent, so I think that was possibly something of an excuse. Anyway, Henry, um, believe it or not, actually always considered himself a Catholic right until his death. Um, but he set up the Church of England. And um, of course, the thing that actually really affected Walsingham was to do with his financial. Henry VIII was short of money. One of his ministers, who was Thomas Cromwell, um, in, showed Henry that if he actually took over the monasteries, he could uh, appropriate their wealth, and this could all go to the crown. And so Henry set his sights on this. They started off with the smaller monasteries, um, I think possibly to sort of whet Henry's appetite. But of course, Walsingham, by that time, was the largest um, religious shrine and uh, pilgrimage centre 